welcome back to my channel so if you are new to this channel make sure that you have subscribed each and every time i will be uploading the video relating to financial accounting cost accounting auditing and transaction so basically each and every week on friday i will make sure that i upload a new video however if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one lesson please make sure that you contact me from the number on the screen below so that we can arrange uh, the date and the time that we can do one-on-one -on -one lesson all right so in this video i'm going to do an introduction on group statement so this is an introduction under a topic of group statement so basically this is a financial accounting all right so firstly we have to understand what is the meaning of group statement all right so if we are talking about the group statement we are talking about the combination combination of two or more companies all right so in other words when we deal with the group statement as a module or as a chapter you have to know that we are going to deal with the complex transaction which involves two or more entities which means that in this case we are not going to deal with the individual companies so there are certain standards that you have to understand in and out so that you will be able to prepare your group statement firstly you have to understand i phrase three this is the first standard that you have to understand in and out when we go to a group statement so this i phrase three deal with the business combination business combination so all requirements that is needed before the business combine into group statement it has been laid down under i phrase three all right remember when we are dealing with two or more entities we must have acquirer which is the business that has purchased the other business and we also have acquiree which is the business that has been purchased so how do you see that this is the if three and we have to apply if three all right the first requirements that has been laid down under if three that we have to know in and out is that um acquiry acquiry must obtain a control over acquiring the business that has purchased the other business must have a, a control or must have a power so this is the main key point under fs3 don't mix up with is28 which i'm going to to summarize it on this video so when we said they acquire have a control which means that they have a power to take a decision under uh, over acquiry over the business that we, we did what we purchased so basically um what you have to know in this standard is that it's not only the percentage that showed us that this is the company that have a, a control all right um for example that i can give you is that even though the company have 60 percent share doesn't mean that the company have a control no what we have to know is that um, the percentage does not guarantee a control so what do we check all right let's check so we have to check the entity 
that is controlling is in here functions all right what do, do i mean by this statement all right let me give you a practical example a person who is dealing with the finance they have a lot of control uh, against what the profit of the company a person who is receiving money and con uh, controlling money of the business um, have a lot of control against what the other functions all right so which means that if a um, acquirer have a 30 percent but is controlling all finance of the of the entity which means that this company has a control has a power against the other shareholders uh, that hold a 70 percent so Basically, this is the summary of the uh, requirements that you you have to check under um, I phrase three. All right. So now, when you have identified that the company has a control, you have to know that uh, the acquirer or the business that has purchased uh, the other entity and obtained the control is required. To measure acquisition acquisition is the purchase to measure acquisition at fair value all right after that um, the acquirer will be acquired to compare Consideration transfer. What is the consideration transfer? Okay, when we talk about the consideration transfer, we are talking about anything that we have contributed to obtain the control. It can be money when we purchase that entity. It's either we give that entity an asset in order for us to gain a what a control. So that's why we don't call it money, but we call it consideration transfer all right we compare the consideration transfer with identifiable asset in other words we have to uh, compare with the net assets of the acquiry so that we can check whether we have obtained gain from the gain or a goodwill so that's what we have to check okay then after that we are we are required to do a goodwill or gain from again remember we only do goodwill under i phrase three okay don't forget that thing all right then if i phrase three has made all the requirements we go to i phrase 10. We don't go to I phrase 10 if I phrase 3 does not meet. Okay. So, what happened under I phrase 10? Alright. What you have to know under I phrase 10 is that we are going to do a consolidated financial statement. So, now we are going to combine our financial statement when i phrase three has met so you firstly have to understand i phrase three in and out so that you will be able to do what to go to i phrase 10 then you do a consolidated financial statement so there are certain requirements that has been laid down under i phrase 10 which i'm going to mention one or two all right what you have to know uh, is that when we com we combine those uh, financial statement of two entity 
or more entity. We are just adding them together. However, IFRS 10 has laid down the principle that we have to follow. Number one, they said under IFRS 10, uh, Appendix B, R18, 6, they said that we have to combine an asset, liability, equity, extent, and income, and cash flow of both entities. So that's the first principle that has been laid down by IFRS 10. Then the second one, they said, when you combine them, if you find um, intra-group transaction or a, a, a transaction which happen within the group for example if these two companies that are combining they want so, sold uh, something to each other which means that we have to do what we have to eliminate we have to eliminate we have to, in other words we have to reverse in full intra group assets liability equity expense and income they said we have to reverse this uh, transaction it's not allowed to do what to combine all those um, intra group items without being eliminated for example if we sold something to each other and we make a profit principle said we have to do what to reverse those profit all right and the other one they said we have to offset they say that we have to offset investment of the parent remember when we purchased that a uh, company we say to us is a what is an asset however when now we uh, do a consolidated financial statement, we have to reverse that investment. All right. So, uh, this is a short summary of IFRS 10. I just uh, point the, the main key point, which uh, I'm going to do. The other videos, which I'm going to lay down everything in more details with the examples. All right. We also have IS. 28 all right under is 28 uh, we are going to deal with investment in associate all right basically uh, how do you see that this is investment in associate the keyword is a significant influence the company must have a what a significant significant influence okay so uh, this is what you have to know and um, i am 28 when we say the company has significant influence which means that the company have a um, influence but does not have a what a control is opposite uh, it's not the same with i phrase three Okay, this is the other standard. So, in general, uh, the company will purchase a percent between 20% to 49%. However, it can happen that the company has a significant influence with less than 20%. However, they have to specify that in agreement. They have to lay that uh, out down the, uh, into into agreement they will state that uh, on the transaction if uh, the percentage is less than 20 percent and the company has significant influence so in this case of is 28 when we eliminate we don't eliminate in full we only eliminate what we have purchased if we purchase 20 percent we are going to eliminate only 20 percent so you have to be very very familiar with this principle so that you won't do mistake because a group statement is very simple, is very straightforward, 
as long as you're applying the principle very carefully. So I hope to see you on on the other lesson, which I'm going to uh, explain all this standard into detail. I will come with the other examples that will make you understand better the, the group statement. So I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.